Very important question because uh, excess sun uh, could cause a whole host of problems, but the sunscreens can be a problem also. Uh, you know, these, are, uh, you know, the sun can cause the aging, the anti-wrinkling, so they, they, you know, the wrinkling, etc. So you want something to prevent that. So, but sunscreens, um, the problem with sunscreens is that, that there's these parabens, there's a whole host of chemicals that you can't pronounce. And the rule of thumb is if you can't pronounce it, your skin can't either. And, and, and these chemicals, when they interact with the sun, can create a whole host of antioxidants, um, uh, things that are, are cancer causing, things that disrupt your hormones. Uh, so, you know, you don't need any of that. Hi there, and welcome back to another Real Talk with Dr. Jim Sharps, where we uh, really look at uh, health, lifestyle, nutrition uh, topics and questions from the perspective of original medicine. So if you're familiar with the channel, you know that this is a, a very lighthearted but very serious at the same time look at a variety of topics. We uh, try to take serious topics um, with a, a level of levity um, that allows it to be accessible and informative um, so that the concepts that, that Dr. Jim has spent decades uh, really honing and, and coming to grips with to make it in a very digestible format. So I hope you're enjoying the content. If you haven't already done so, hit like and subscribe if you appreciate the content um, so that others can, can hopefully uh, enjoy the content as, as you are. So in terms of this week, uh, we're continuing as, as we approach the summer months. Um, things to kind of look out for and, and we've we've this week collected some questions that we have in from the community from the comments uh, from the practice that uh, Dr. Jim runs and we've collated some of those questions into the, the top five that we receive uh, hopefully things to think about as, as we move into uh, hotter climates if you're in, in the northern hemisphere. Uh, so first question uh, Dr. Jim, um, what preventative measures do you suggest to protect to protect against dehydration, heat rash, etc., is one of the more common kind of heat ailments or maladies. Ah, uh, yes, uh, excellent question. And protection against dehydration and wrinkles, and obviously dehydration, as the term connotes, uh, you don't have enough water. So you want to make sure you're being well hydrated. So uh, you know the rule of thumb is, you know, especially in hot weather, you want to have at least like four to eight ounces every hour of water, um, a minimum depending upon how much uh, uh, you're sweating, et cetera, how hot it is, but at least four to eight ounces will help you uh, from, or prevent you from being dehydrated. So that, that's the main thing. And then of course, you know, as much as you can, you know, if you're working outside, things of that nature, you, you can't avoid, um, it's difficult to find shade, but if you can, you know, don't spend more than an hour or two in the intense sunlight without taking some kind of a break. Thank you, Dr. Jim. And in, in terms of a follow up question, in terms of that dehydration, another kind of common area is sunscreen, um, UV, protecting your skin. Uh, and do you have any kind of guidance on, on the sunscreen that, that you would look or is there a natural alternative that, that you would recommend? Uh, yes, excellent question about sunscreen and, and UV protection. Very important question because uh, excess sun uh, could cause a whole host of problems, but the sunscreens can be a problem also. Uh, you know, these are, uh, you know, the sun can cause the aging, the anti-wrinkling, so they, they, you know, the wrinkling, et cetera. So you want something to prevent that. So, but sunscreens, um, the problem with sunscreens is that there's these parabens, there's a whole host of chemicals that you can't pronounce. And the rule of thumb is if you can't pronounce it, your skin can't either. And, and, and these chemicals, when they interact with the sun, can create a whole host of antioxidants, um, uh, things that are, are cancer causing, things that disrupt your hormones. Uh, so, you know, you don't need any of that kind of thing. So there are some natural um, sunscreens that you can use, you can make your own. So things uh, like mixture of coconut oil, aloe vera gel, uh, those uh, work well together, a little bit of olive oil. Uh, you know, you can make your own mixture and you can actually add some, uh, some of the, um, the natural uh, essential oils. 
uh, things like lavender, things like myrrh, frankincense, uh, the, a little bit of that. And these actually tone the skin. It makes it healthy. It protects the collagen and it makes the skin healthy. So it makes it even more tolerable to wind and, and, and sun and a whole host of issues. So what you want to do is you want to use some kind of a sunscreen that is enhancing the integrity of the skin. So those are some natural things that you can use instead of sunscreen. And worst case, try to avoid, you know, as I said, if there's parabens, oxybenzene, those kinds of things. Worst case, if all you have is sunscreen, at least add a little bit of uh, aloe vera gel or some of these things that actually can mitigate the damage. So that's what I would recommend. Um, if you can avoid it, uh, um, avoid as much as possible. Some people say wear the sunscreen all the time. That's not a good idea. These are not healthy for your skin. And, and just using some common sense, you see in these tropical countries, you don't see a pandemic of skin cancer. So these, they're not dropping dead, they're not have one. And, and if you notice, their skin is not wrinkled usually, and they're not um, aging that fast. So the sun is not the enemy. It's basically the intelligent um, use of the sun. And, and of course, the, 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 the fairer your complexion, the more careful you want to be, and you want to build up the tolerance. So that's what you want to do. Uh, don't spend um, the first time you have good sunlight three or four hours. Start with 20 to 30 minutes, and as you build it up, your skin will adapt. And if you do some of these natural things, uh, you will be promoting the skin and promoting the sun to tolerance, and it will help you to produce the vitamin D that you need from the extra cholesterol in the body, etc. So that is a, a long-winded way of answer, uh, answering the question, but hopefully it gives you some guidelines in terms of the proper protection against sunlight. No, that's, that's very clear. And just a kind of a connected question to that. You, you mentioned out in the sun and wearing sunscreen. Sunscreen usually is a, a complement or follows very closely on outdoor activities. Are there any activities that, that you would suggest should be avoided? Um, to kind of reduce risk or is it just as you said earlier a case of being intelligent in how you go about you know deciding your activities yes excellent question um, activities you want to avoid in the intense heat and you want to avoid anything where there's going to be a profuse amount of sweating so you want to block that uh, there's a couple of things that you can do to do that at, at, at a minimum you will probably want to wear clothing uh, you know more natural clothing like cotton that's breathable uh, but you don't want to do, for example, you don't want to run a marathon in 90 degree temperature. Uh, you don't, anything that causes profuse sweating is going to be a, a, a major problem. So any of those activities, take a break, make sure you're being hydrated, get a little holster and carry your water around with you. So you want to replace the water um, uh, that you're losing from the, from the excess sweating. And, uh, and, and there, at times you might even want to have uh, something that actually has electrolytes in it. So you, so things like coconut water, any kind of juicing, have some fruit, anything that's going to be replenished the water and, and replenish those electrolytes. That's clear. And I, and I think that kind of uh, managing your own body, I think is it, just to clarify, is that a total do not do anything that, that causes sweat or is it a case of again, being intelligent in how you kind of measure and the intensity of your activity if, if you are in, in kind of hot temperature. Yes, uh, so you, you don't have to do total avoidance in hot weather, but, but it is exactly what you said. It's a matter of common sense and understanding what your individual capacities are and then, uh, and then proceeding in, in an intelligent fashion with that. Yeah, um, and then uh, just coming to the end of these common questions that, that we've collated, um, what are some of the symptoms of heat related illness? I remember athletic training back when I was in, in school and there was the classic kind of very like a cold sweat almost I used to get through outdoor training doing the, the sprint walks. Um, are there any symptoms, early kind of warning signs that your body may be overheating, your core temperature is getting too high that you can then again be intelligent in reducing the intensity and, and reducing any risk of kind of significant um, issues? Yes, uh, excellent question. What are, the, what are some of the symptoms of excess sun, excess heating? Uh, and, 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 and that's really important. Uh, they can range anywhere 
from lightheadedness to actually passing out and going into a coma. If you lose too much of those electrolytes, as I said, if you get dehydrated, uh, you, 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 you can get slurred speech, you can get brain fog. So a whole host of issues, uh, very, very low blood pressure, the heart beating too hard. So there's a number of these symptoms. If you notice uh, any of these things, you wanna, you, you wanna proceed quickly in addressing that because you don't want to get to a point of uh, what I call a point of no return where you, where you passed out. So that's where it's important to do that hydrating, to make sure that you're replacing those electrolytes. Um, uh, sometimes you see people at, uh, at, tra at track meets in very hot weather, they, they, they're exerting all of this energy and they pass out at the finish line because all that sweating, all that loss of electrolytes, all that loss of water uh, is not being replenished while you're in that consistent activity. So you want to um, uh, restore that water as quickly as possible. But the important thing is water um, alone can be a problem. That's why you hear me talk about electrolytes. So even carrying around some, some dry fruit or any kind of a fruit, not only does it provide the water, but it also provide the electrolytes to keep everything functioning so, so that you'll have good brain function, a good central nervous function, and you can avoid those symptoms of uh, slurred speech, of headaches, of lightheadedness, of brain fog, and dizziness, and, and, and things of that nature. Yeah, great. Very clear. Uh, and then a final question, Dr. Jim. Uh, what tips do you have for not just understanding if there are some early kind of symptoms of kind of heat related illness, but what tips do you have proactively, intelligently staying cool and comfortable during hotter months? Oh, wow. Really good question. So what are some proactive things that you can do to prepare for those summer months and then to be able to to proceed in them in, in a very enjoyable and functional manner? And when, one of the things you can do is start building up your tolerance now. So while it's not too hot, spend time out in the sun, even if in the weekend where you can spend up to two to three hours. And so you're already building up uh, that tolerance, that adaptation. So by the time you get to the hot summer, you're not going from completely indoors com uh, and spending an exorbitant amount of time out in the sun. The other thing you can do is from a dietary standpoint, you can start building up uh, your uh, immune system. You can start, you know, start eating more fruits and vegetables, which is going to uh, build up the mineral content of your, of your skin, of all of your organs, but promoting skin health. Some of those things that I talked about in terms of sunscreen, you can also start using now. So start using aloe vera gel uh, on your skin, a little coconut oil, a little bit of olive oil, just a thin amount. And so what you're doing is, is you're promoting the health and integrity of the skin. So it becomes more tolerable and, and it has a, a, a buildup of resistance against the sun. So these are some very practical, natural things that you can do so you can have a very happy, healthy and enjoyable summer season. Dr. Jim, thank you so much. I hope that's given you a few things to think about in terms of as we approach the summer months and tips for understanding if you are getting into the red zone, which is a cycling term for those that are cycling aficionados um, and also some preventative uh, approaches you can take in terms of being intelligent in your choice. And that's the main takeaway for me, uh, Dr. Jim, and what you said is being intelligent. And I think that's a theme that runs through uh, a lot of the, the ideas that, that orid original medicine puts forward. It's, it's in applying principles intelligently uh, and specifically. So Dr. Jim, thank you so much uh, for, for sharing some more knowledge with us. Hope you've appreciated the uh, video. Um, if you have appreciated it, do hit like and subscribe um, so others can 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 understand and, and get to know the, the really interesting insights that Dr. Jim has to share. But until then, next time, bye for now. Bye for now. God bless.